Do you think that it's going to benefit all the gamers across the board? Um, definitely yes. I think because you know they only announced uh, 45 games, um, but uh, I think it's a very good beginning. So if you have the first group of games to be approved, then people generally uh, would expect that there will be more. Uh, new games are still very important for those gaming companies, uh, you know, uh, because basically this is a sector that highly rely on new products. Uh, we haven't seen like new products uh, published for the uh, last nine months, so it's definitely something very positive for the whole sector. But you're still only keeping a buy on NetEase. You're keeping a hold on Tencent and Bilibili. Explain. Uh, first of all, NetEase is the uh, basically I think 80 or 90 percent of the revenue coming from gaming. But if you look at Tencent and Bilibili, they're multi-business companies. So. There are a lot of other stuff. For example, Tencent has have advertising business. Billy Billy have a lot of you know live streaming and advertising. Um, and uh, I think for NetEase, they also have a better gaming pipeline. I think they're more realistic now. They are basically converting some of the large IPs to the game. But if you look at Tencent, their global uh, expansion, uh, their uh, pursuit of like AAA games, uh, these are, I think they still have some uncertainty. Uh, for Bilibili, I think they are facing even more challenge. Um, they are definitely doing something to cut the cost, but I think investors are looking more to the, you know, the uh, user growth and the revenue growth. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, two reasons why we give NetEase a buy, and we still have put Tencent and Bilibili to hold rating. Sean, and in the broader context, is it rational for the market to suddenly get so excited about this latest decision uh, and rise so much? Because surely this one move doesn't mean we're going back to the status quo ante. This doesn't mean that China is now just going to let the games companies do what they want. We still have a regulatory and cultural landscape that is being shaped and controlled by the government, uh, which must surely in the long term really affect uh, and make a massive difference to the way gaming companies operate and the amount of money they can make. Um, I would say yes, but it's still a good news. You know, a good news is better than no good news coming out, right? Um, I think because the thing is that uh, for the past nine months, there have been a lot of discussions when the game code can be released. Uh, and uh, uh, there has been a lot of discussions. So when I think the investors have been very uh, cautious whenever there's like information mm -hmm. say there will be game code approval. Uh, out here that they see the, uh, you know, the, 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 there's like formal uh, announcements. And secondly, if you look at back, in, back to uh, 18, uh, 2018, the thing is that, uh, you know, the uh, tens and nettis, they don't perform very well. Their revenue keeps very low growth uh, in the time that there's like freeze of game code. But uh, after that, I think that uh, uh, seems that they are at least their revenue back to uh, uh, like uh, uh, normal okay. growth speeds. So for those large gaming companies, I think even though that there's you know this kind of regulation, this kind of de uh, de uh, demand from the government, they are still in a better position, and the players' demand right. is still there. So it's better for the sector consolidation.